So my fascination with the power of the mind and positive thought began when I was 17 years old and I had quite a severe spinal injury. I had a motorbike accident. Now for those in the medical profession that would like the, the technical terms, I had a compression fracture of T4 and T5 and a spinal cord lesion at T6, which left me paralysed from the chest down. Now when I woke up in intensive care, the doctors told me I would never walk again. And as you can see, I'm still in dispute with the medical profession over that one because I seem to be on my feet. I was very lucky, though. I grew up in a family where our main phrase was, there's no such word as can't. And that one-liner has led me down a very interesting, diverse path of learning and opportunity. Now, when I think, think about being optimistic, until being invited to come and do this. I'd never really considered the subject. But I, when I look back on my life, I found that I am actually a very optimistic person. And any problems that ever arose in my life, I would always have the metaphor of every cloud has a silver lining. And I would always try to find some positive out of it. Maybe I'd sit in a heap and cry for five minutes, but after that I would think there is a positive in this somewhere. Now, with optimism, there's been quite a few scientific studies around the subject over the last few years. And the most recent one that I have read that I enjoyed was The Science of Optimism by Tally Sherrott. And in Tally's book, she says that we are hardwired for hope. And I really like that phrase. I like that. I like to think that we are actually wired to be hopeful as human beings. And optimistic people, they tend to live longer, be generally happier, bounce back from failure very quickly, and they tend not to suffer from stress and anxiety because they're not continually projecting fearful thoughts about their future into their daily lives. And being optimistic and stress-free is very beneficial to the body as well because when you are stressed and anxious, you tend to produce a chemical in your body called cortisol. And if any of you know anything about cortisol, it's one of the most damaging chemicals that we produce internally and it can lead to many forms of disease in the body. It weakens the immune system, it can interfere with bone formation, which later in life can lead to osteo osteoporosis, it um, heightens the blood pressure, and it does many, many other things that are quite harmful. But there is a light at the end of that tunnel. There are some wonderful ways to lower your levels of cortisol. So what better excuse to go out at the weekend and dance, listen to some good music, have a laugh with your friends, add some humour in your life, and then follow it off at the end of the weekend with a nice visit to a spa and get a massage. And all of these wonderful things will lower your levels of cortisol. So there are three basic things I do in life to keep myself off of the negative thought train. And number one is I try to avoid the use of the word I can't. Because your body loves to support you in everything you do in life and anything you ask of it, if you want to do something and you're already thinking, I can't do this, I'm not good enough, I'm not fast enough, I'm not strong enough, I'm not clever enough, your body basically will say, fair enough, it packs its bags and leaves without you and just leaves you to it. Now, I was shown something a few years ago called a muscle test, which is a quick and effective way of demonstrating to someone how that process of thinking, I can't, depletes your resources before you've even started. And due to time restraints, I'm just going to pick someone quickly out of the audience to help me with a brief demonstration of a muscle test. So, can I just have one of the TED volunteers? Can I grab you, please? If you'd, yeah, if you'd just like to come down here for one second. People always have that shocked reaction when you pull them out of the crowd. But this, So if you just stand next to me, and if you just face the audience. And this, you can use this to test any positive or negative response in someone. So have a play about with this afterwards with your friends and colleagues. And you can use it to see if they tell you that they want to do something. You know when you, you ask someone, do you want to do something? And they go, oh, yeah, but they're, you know, the, body, the body language isn't matching what's coming out of their mouth. You can use a muscle test to actually see if they really want to do something or if they're being lenient with the truth. I like to play about with that one. So if you just raise your arm up to the side. So all I want you to do is just keep your arm nice and just strong there, just like that. And I'd just like you to repeat the words continually. I can, I can, I can, I can, I can. And just keep strong. Now, that's his positive response. In your body, can you feel that, yeah? It's quite nice and strong. And now what I'd like you to do is arm back up again. 
and just be strong. And I'd like you to continually repeat the word, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, over and over again. I can't, I can't, I can't. Can you see the difference? <laughs> it's nice, isn't it, when you suddenly, when someone lets you know what the word I can't does, some people's reaction, they try and hold their arm so tight, their arm flies up and hits them in the head when they say I can't. But if you'd like to give my glamorous assistant a round of applause. As you can see how that works, I like to play with that two or three times so people really get a sense within their body what they do to themselves when they use a negative command. The most powerful example I have of actually using a muscle test on someone, I'm a wheelchair basketball coach and I had a young player, 13 years old, come into a session and he was a recent double amputee. Very sad lad, didn't really have a lot in his head to live for. And during the session, the first 10 minutes I spent listening to him with everything I asked him to do, he was just saying, I can't, I can't, I can't. And I thought, enough of this. I can't actually listen to that any longer. So there is times when you can use it. I took him aside and I muscle tested him. Now after three muscle tests, he decided, that I was he decided I was doing some sort of magic trick on him. And then he made me do it again and again and again. And then in the end, he said to me, I've just come to the conclusion you're a witch but I'm never going to use that word again, and he wouldn't even repeat the word to me. He went back out into the training session, he pushed around, he encouraged everybody else. He had no idea what he was doing, this was his first training session, but he had a smile on his face and he was actually enjoying himself. Now, I thought no more about it. I just went home, came back to training the next week, and this young chap came straight past me, gave me a big high five, big smile on his face, and went and joined straight in with the session. And his parents walked over to me and said, excuse me, coach, can we just have a chat with you for a couple of minutes? And I was like, yeah, of course you can. And they said to me, what on earth have you done to our son? And I thought, oh, no, what have I done to their son? <laughs> it was like, oops. And they said, no, 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 we're only joking. They said, we just wanted to thank you. We went home after training and we said, Jamie, do you want a drink? And he said, yeah, I'll go and get it. Normally you, you, you have to do everything for this lad. And he was straight in the kitchen, made himself a drink, pushed through to the living room, spilt half of it on the floor, to the delight of his parents. They had parquet flooring, so they were quite happy about it. They could clean it up. Then he went to make his own dinner. He put his plate on, the lap, on his lap. As he pushed into the, into the hallway, half of his dinner went onto the floor, to the delight of their dog. And uh, he started cleaning his bedroom, doing his own washing, and they just said, we, we can't believe the change in our son, literally overnight. And I could not believe the change in the boy that was in front of me now, encouraging everybody, joining in and just being happy. And for me, that was just a wonderful demonstration of the power that we have within this system. So the second thing I like to do to make sure I stay off of the negative thought train is to be very aware of when I use the word, I don't. Because I don't know if you guys notice, but in society, we're very good at telling everybody what we don't want. How about we have a look at what we actually want out of life? And when you start thinking about what you want, instead of keep projecting out what you don't want, you will actually find you get a lot happier and you start getting things coming into your existence that you actually do want. A simple example of a don't want, if I said to you all now, whatever you do, don't think about pink elephants. What have you all just done, or the majority? I bet you've thought about a pink elephant. So that just gives you a little inside information as to what happens in the brain when you give it a command. Whether it's a negative command or a positive command, it will try and fulfill that for you. So as much as you can, just be aware when you're using the word I don't. And what I tend to do, when I hear myself say I don't want, because it's normally in a coaching situation, and the last thing you need to be doing is telling players what you don't want them to do, because they'll instantly go down the court and do it. So when I say I don't want, I just have a little chuckle at myself and go, ha ha, I caught you. And then I change it to what I want out of that situation. And then I find the majority of the time I get a much better result. So the third thing I like to do to make sure I'm staying on track is I like to be very, very vigilant about my internal voice and how it talks to me. You know that little voice that we all have when you want to do something and it just pipes up in the back of your head? Ah, but you're not confident enough to do that or you don't believe in yourself enough to do that, or you don't have the knowledge to do that. Well, I discovered a few years ago that mine wasn't wonderfully supportive and very positive. And a good friend of mine showed me a very simple way 
that you can listen to your voice and then change it to however you want it to sound. Because I'm sure we'd all like something in our heads that's motivational and positive and backs you up rather than puts you down before you start. So, what I'd like to do with your permission, just for the last few minutes, is I would like you just to join in a little mass experiment with me, and we're going to have a brief listen to your internal voice and see how it sounds, hear how it sounds, notice how it feels, and then change it to what you want. So if you just all take a lovely long deep breath and just let your shoulders drop and just allow your eyes to close because it's nicer to do it with your eyes closed. And then I'd like you all just to think about a situation that may be bothering you a little bit, something you'd like to do that you're slightly unsure of. And just have a listen to how your voice talks to you about that situation. Is it already positive and supporting? And if it is, wonderful, keep it like that. But if it's not, if it's slightly reprimanding, or it's a bit like a regimental sergeant major, or it's not being very supportive, I'd like you now just to play about with the, the tone of it to start with. Take it up the octaves, make it really high-pitched, listen to yourself in a really high squeaky voice, and then just drop it down really, really low, take it down to some Barry White tones, and just see how that sounds down there. And just notice how it feels in your body. And then just hear yourselves say some really nice things to yourself. Tell yourself how good you are, how great you will be at whatever it is you want to do, how successful you already are, how confident you are, how much you believe in yourself already. And just notice how that feels in your body. And just find now, just go up and down the scale and just find a nice tone that you like. Mine's pretty much as you're hearing me now. It's quite chilled out and quite relaxed and it's very supporting. So just find that, that nice voice in your head now that you like to listen to, something that encourages you. Maybe some of you need a bit of regimental sergeant major in your life. And maybe you just need to feel relaxed and happy. And when you find that nice tone, just now inside yourself, just ask your higher self to set that. And say, this is now how I wish to support myself internally. And then just take another couple of lovely, long, deep breaths. And just allow that feeling to settle in. And know now that your voice should, in the future, support you how you've asked it to. And then when you feel comfortable, just allow your eyes to open again and come back to me here. And that is just a nice little experiment. And that's something you can take away with you and do at any time. Any time you're feeling slightly unbalanced or you've, asked, you've been asked to do something or you want to do something and that voice <coughs> kicks in and you feel like it's not really supporting you, just take a deep breath close your eyes, and just change it to how you want to hear it, because this system is yours. And you're not a passenger in this body to be driven along. You are actually in the driving seat, and you can make choices on how this all sounds and how it behaves. So just have a think, what choices are you going to make? How good a driver are you going to be? And if I can leave you with anything, I would just like you to leave you with this thought. Just think big. Think I can, and then you will. And thank you. That's me done.